Deafness and sign language are extremely close to my heart. I always say deafness is a silent disability you can't see, and it's not life-threatening, so it has to touch your life in some way in order for it to be on your radar. There are things like the importance of having a show reel, a headshot, a cover note, a tailored CV, these are all really important when you are trying out for roles. We value stuff quite highly. Why? Because that stuff apparently matters. Not only that, we use it as a measure of how successful we are, and as a result of that, having more of this stuff often determines how people treat us. I think I'd really enjoy doing some more theater, because that's where I started off. Due to the closure of many deaf schools in the UK, deaf children are forced to attend mainstream school. I don't mind this idea. I think it's inclusive, and it better prepares children for life in a hearing world. I don't mind this idea if that child gets the right support. I've seen the needless struggles that deaf children and deaf people face, and that gave me the impetus to write. The cause is very close to my heart, and I'm proud to be supporting NDCS in helping deaf children overcome the challenges they face in everyday life. In the deaf community, there is exactly that, a community. It's like nothing I see in the hearing world. It's old-fashioned, I guess, and beautiful. With the right support, a deaf child can do exactly the same as a hearing child, yet constantly, they're being failed. Inequality within the deaf and hard of hearing community is something I feel really passionate about and always will do. I'm extremely proud of Hollyoaks. No one could be flying the flag more happily. Millions of children all over the world live in silence and face communication barriers and, particularly, access to education. I really enjoy being involved in Hollyoaks later, it's great. I like to think my accent isn't strong enough, but it's funny. I get people coming up to me in America and saying I sound like Mel B. She's from Leeds. They just hear a British accent and probably can't quite work it out. I'm so excited, and I feel very lucky, as to be working in LA is a bit of a dream come true for any actor. I definitely have to have a few pinch myself moments as I'm driving to work in Hollywood. My ideal would be to hop both sides of the Atlantic to work, as I'm sure every actor would. I stay in touch with a lot of the cast, Jess Fox, Jen Metcalf and Nikki Sanderson, and probably more that I've missed out. It's a cliché but it really is like a family at Hollyoaks. My dad lost his hearing in the last 18 months of his life, and as a result, I witnessed firsthand the effect that this can have on a family. I'm beyond excited to join the cast of Switched at Birth and to be part of such a great show on a great network. Living in Los Angeles is pretty cool. Switched at Birth has an amazing cast, including an Oscar winner and two Emmy nominees. The writing is very innovative, and the show's producers have redefined US TV by launching a mainstream show, which includes multiple deaf cast members whose characters communicate only in ASL, American Sign Language. To be honest, the first thing that hits you when you step off the plane in LA is just how eager people are to help you out here, or, at least, that's what I've found. When someone walks into me, 
Whether it's my fault or not, I say, sorry. I feel that Britain is a rather self-deprecating nation. You're almost considered egotistical to say you're good at anything. There are many issues within the deaf community, but, for me, none more important than access to education for deaf children. I've done my fair share of fundraising over the years, and I know how difficult that can be, so I could only imagine people's reaction when I was asking them to part with their hard-earned cash for a movie. For me, film is an extremely powerful way of conveying a message to a mainstream audience. I've seen a lot of people in my life base their self-worth on what job they book or don't book, what car they drive, or whether they can afford a house deposit or not. We need to be a bit kinder and more aware of what is really important. Everybody should learn sign language or, at least, hello, do you need help? How are you? It's really important to remember that disability is diversity and that disabled actors and disabilities are something that is hugely underrepresented in film. Hollyoaks really is such a great place to work, and there was nothing bad whatsoever about my time there. I loved my job, I loved everybody that I worked with, and I was blessed with great storylines. The 3000th episode is a great milestone for Hollyoaks, so it was just really nice and a big honor to play a part in it. When you're an actor, it's really great to be busy, that's what we all want. There are plenty of good drama schools and academies helping children and young people to learn to sing, dance, and act. I'm hoping I can fill a gap by helping to advise people on acting mechanics, the kinds of things that, looking back, I would have really benefited from as a teenager. Dad could speak with a strong voice, and luckily, he was very good at lip reading, so he was able to disguise his deafness well. He tried various hearing aids, but would find them fiddly and uncomfortable, and worse, they often made horrible high-pitched noises. At first, I simply wanted to get a basic understanding of sign language, but as time went on, I really got the bug and wanted to become proficient so that I could make good use of my skills. Australia is on my to-do list, I have never been, and everyone says how wonderful it is. I'd love to do something hard-hitting, like a lawyer or a policewoman, something like that. That would be nice. I've been involved in the deaf community for years, and my friends in the community that are actors or performers get very frustrated when they see hearing people portraying a deaf role. Being at the first post-Weinstein Oscars was amazing. It felt like there's a spotlight on diversity, 